and my name is Simone Hayward and I'm an executive producer for Maverick TV. And what are the responsibilities that come with being the executive producer? So the exec producer, you're the liaison between the client and the client being the broadcaster and production. And ultimately you are the editorial, where the buck stops with editorial. So if there is problems um, that are kind of bigger than what a series producer can yeah. and cope with um, or legal issues, everything kind of filters up to you. But you don't deal with day-to-day -day problems. Oh, okay. That's good. But <laughs> <laughs> and what is the uh, background information of Maverick? So what, how did it all kind of begin? How did it all start? Uh, Maverick Television started at around about 10 to 15 years ago. Um, I've only been here two years, so I'm not, <laughs> uh, I'm not kind of, uh, you know, there from the very beginning. But um, Maverick uh, has a kind of history in um, kind of public service and medical programming. So um, Embarrassing Bodies is one of our yeah. big uh, brands. Um, and we've done a lot of kind of medical medical style shows, right. really. Uh, Bizarre ER, uh, to name but a few. Yeah. Oh, that's very interesting. And what is the process of getting a programme commissioned? So maybe, like, getting commission developed, and so what is that the key process? So essentially, a, a lot of this is about um, having really good relationships with broadcasters. So each of the execs in our team will have um, different relationships with different broadcasters. Um, and really the process is, you know, what's out there at the moment, yeah. finding really good contributors normally is a great, so you can, an idea can be sparked off by just meeting a group of people or somebody that's just really fantastic on camera, or it can be something that you see in a newspaper and you think, wow, that would make a great topic, or it can be a broadcaster might say to you, do you know what, we're looking for medical programming, we're looking for stuff about parenting, so it can come in various ways really, but the process would be, would be that once you get the idea, you work it up into um, a proposal, which could be anything from one page to four or five pages long, wow. it can be detailed, it can have a running order, it can have talent attached to it, it can have screen tests, it can have a taster tape, uh, but essentially that would kind of go to the broadcaster, it might get developed more if the yeah. broadcaster is interested and then they might give you money for a pilot or it might just get greenlit and signed off as it is. Wow, and how much does it usually cost, like commission-wise, or is that their tariff? Their tariffs really do tariff. vary from broadcaster to broadcaster, um, also from, you know, what slot it's in, so daytime would be yeah. vastly different from, you know, Saturday night, uh, <laughs> shiny floor, ITV1 or BBC1 yeah. kind of entertainment show. So it is, it is quite varied. Oh, wow. And um, how do you make the decision of what equipment to use when you do go out to uh, locations? Well, normally, when you're putting a budget together, you have to know what you're going to have kind of up front. Yeah. So you'll have allocations of crew days, how many self-shooting days there are. Um, a lot of the broadcasters have stipulations of what cameras they can, you can and can't use. Wow, okay. Um, and so really the, it kind of comes at the almost the development stage when you're putting a, a budget together before yeah. it even goes into pr production and then you know a series director or a director might come on board and say actually I think it'd be really great for it to have this look with using these lenses yeah. so it can evolve but normally you know you kind of allocate pots of money for cameras and cameras technical equi equipment kind right. of right at the front and how much like how like how much time can you commit to one program like at one time as an exec yeah so this would be a really good example. Beginning of this year, I had three projects. Wow. And um, you, there's no kind of like Monday, I'm going to allocate a morning yeah. to this. You just have to have a really organised... <laughs> yeah, you have to have a really organised diary, yeah. basically, and just yeah. say to your series producers and your production managers, yeah. look, book time in. But to give you a kind of idea, that was completely full-time for me. So wow. on the weekends, I'd be on my Blackberry... Um, but then you get, you know, it's kind of peaks and troughs. You can go into yeah. lulls. Um, it just entirely depends what you've got going on at what time. Um, for that example, I've just given you, we had um, everything was shooting, editing, and delivering pretty much at the same time. So it was all kind of wow, yeah, all in one kind of thing. All in, all in one. But then you can have one series, or you can have two. You can have one that's kind of yeah. in development, and then gets the green light. You can have one that's delivering. So, you know, it's kind of you have to really be able to manage your own time. Seems a lot. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> you get to used to... If you work in television, you have to multitask. Yeah, so, of course. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Um, and what equipment do you use, and why do you use those certain equipment? In terms of cameras? Uh, yeah, cameras, sound, everything. Uh, so if we go with self-shooting, it's normally the Canon XF305. Okay. 
Um, and if we're going for cruise, I've recently used the C300s um, because they've got quite a filmic look. Yeah. Uh, and they, um, especially with the lenses, it's, it's, it's really beautiful. Yeah. They're not great for kind of actuality, i.e. you're running a, down the street yeah. because the lens is so sensitive to movement. But like they can do really beautiful sit-down interviews and if people are quite static they're great for that but it entirely depends on you know what the project is what it yeah. requires like I mentioned if you've got kind of actuality yeah. or reality you need cameras that are quite exactly. responsive yeah. uh, and exactly the same with sound once again when you're kind of putting together a budget for a show and you're developing a proposal you kind of have an idea of what's going to be best yeah. but we also have a, um, a facilities manager who's always kind of keeping us updated with new camera technology and um, you know kind of the latest things that you can use uh, and my husband's a director, so I'm always kind of oh. pretty, pretty on board of what's yeah. going on. <laughs> <laughs> right, so how did you kind of land this job? So what, did, what was your, like, your previous... Okay. Do you want from the very beginning, or do you want a kind of... Uh, from From Maverick, okay. <laughs> well, I started off as uh, a runner. Right. So basically, um, back in the day, they actually advertised jobs in newspapers. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, so uh, <laughs> I, I answered an ad uh, to be a runner at a post-production facility. Brilliant. And I was there about three months, and they used to edit a lot with MTV and VH1. Yeah. And I got an internship off the back of that at Brilliant. VH1, and it kind of snowballed from there. And I first came to Maverick in 2010 as a series producer for an MTV show called um, My Super Sweet. Yes. Do you know? Yes. Now, it's not My Super Sweet uh, 16, 16, it was My Super Sweet World Class, which was an international show yeah. where we basically shot all parties all around the world, 18 to 25 year olds. Wow. Uh, so it was a lot of kind of foreign travelling, yeah. very, very tricky to cast, um, but they were very pleased with it and we got a second series. Yeah. Uh, and then I came back and I exec the second series. Brilliant. Uh, and I did um, some Disney projects for them while I was there. And then, yeah, I got, I got made staff at the beginning of this year. Brilliant. And this year I've done two projects for Discovery, kind of makeover and surgical. Yeah. And then I've done a, a project for CBBC, Operation Ouch which Brilliant. is on air at the moment, which is kind Brilliant. of a medical, so, uh, factual, factual entertainment show yeah. about so medicine. Yeah, going from like music to medical kind of, you kind of yeah. find your field now. Yeah, I mean, along the way, you know, I've done a lot of kids television, kind of a lot of live yeah. television, Saturday morning kids television, when they used to be Saturday morning kids television. Yes. Uh, I've done things like I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, oh, yeah, Editing in the Jungle in the middle of nowhere um, so <laughs> yeah and I've fun. done that you know I've done a lot of events I've done you know I did the Brit Awards every year for five years Brilliant. so yeah I've, I've had quite a very it's quite unusual to have yeah. such a varied range of yeah a kind of experience really Brilliant. but I do feel like I kind of have got a background in most things yeah definitely so you can kind of variety that's really good and with the like advancement in technology um does it change the way you shoot documentaries compared to TV studios? Um, and then how do you like market them? So, do you so what do you mean about advancement in technology? And so, like, due to like, how I don't like. So basically, for example, Operation Out. Yes. Uh, choosing the fact that you had the the uh, smaller cameras that would be looking at the presenter and at the driver as they're going to a call. Okay. All right. So um, again, when you're looking at a project. Uh, in fact, that is something like Operation Out. You don't exactly, you don't 100% know what the strands are going to be within the right. show. You've got a kind of rough idea, yeah. but kind of along the way, you, you kind of get, okay, this is what it's going to be. And actually, we've got access to film in an ambulance. So how are we going to get the best coverage? Okay. We've got access to film in an air ambulance. How, what's the best coverage for that? Yeah. Um, and you really just... I think you've got to kind of keep on your game and know what's out there. Right. So, for example, on Operation Ouch, we used um, GoPros that were kind of fixed in, in the um, ambulance yeah. and also in the air ambulance. Um, and, again, it's just kind of working with our um, head of facilities that can really kind of tell us. If we say, look, we've got this strand that we want to film or this kind of film that we want to film, yeah. what's the best thing to use? And really kind of right. they bring their expertise. Bring, yeah. Yeah. Or, or the director, or the director, or, well, you know, yeah. it's a kind of collaborative, you know, what's the best way, and the most cost-efficient way as well. Yeah, of course. You know, a, a lot of people kind of forget that there's, you know, when you go to the edit, there's ingesting costs and yeah. conversion costs, so it's actually about kind of managing, making it look pretty, and what's best for it on screen, but also managing, actually, can so we afford it, yeah, and actually pr cost versus how long we can film, yeah. it's kind of weighing those things up. Oh, okay, and... 
Um, how do you like market new programmes? For example, like there was a new series of embarrassing bodies. How would you market that out to the public? Well, it entirely depends whether it's a new series or um, an existing a series. Yeah. So an existing series like Embarrassing Bodies, we've got well-known talent on that, like yeah. Dr. Dr. Christian. So Dr. Christian can go on various shows, and then promote, promote it. Right. Uh, it's a little bit more tricky with new series, yeah. but again, I mean, it's kind of press. You 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 get your talent to go and go on various programs. So Operation Out, uh, Dr. Chris Van Tellican went on to BBC Breakfast. He went on to Blue Peter. He did a lot of um, kind of uh, print press interviews um, for the right kind of market. Um, but we have a press department here at Maverick that kind of work with that. And then you also work with the press and marketing departments of the broadcaster as well. Yeah. So really, a lot of the marketing comes from the broadcaster. Yeah. They have the budgets, they have the actual departments dedicated yeah. to um, marketing a program, whether that be they want to spend money on billboards or, you know, virals, it entirely depends. Thank you very much for taking your time out to be interviewed. Um, you can watch this online at staffstv.co.uk. Till then, take care. Bye.